Good day everyone and welcome to the program Agriculture on the Move. My name is Philip Sidney, your host. We are still in the new year. The year, the year is very young, it's, we are still in January. So let me see a prosperous new year and a productive one to the farmers, the fishers, the agro-processors, uh, of course the staff of the Ministry of Agriculture and everyone in that chain, a uh, prosperous 2023. With me today is the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development, Mr. Barimo Felicien. And of course, sir, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mr. Sidney. And let me say warm greetings to everyone, a prosperous and healthy new year to everyone out there. Mr. P.S., you have been in this dynamic ministry for about, about six years, I think. Uh, no, about, no, of, November 2018. 2018. <laughs> and you, you came into the hot seat. Uh, the ministry is a very dynamic ministry, of course. I'm sure you know that by now. I know you've had many challenges. You came in in a ch challenging period, um, of course, with the movement of the Bosage to Volet and so many other things. And of course, you were so challenged, of course, with COVID in between. So give us, take us through that period uh, where, where, in terms of getting the ministry on a steady you know, um, um, program. When I came in November 2018, one of my immediate challenges was that I was new to the ministry, obviously. The Deputy Permanent Secretary, Mr. Augustine Cadet, was also leaving. Mm -hmm. So I had a DPS who was relatively new as well. So that in itself, taking the leadership of our ministry with, with two persons relatively new, that was challenging. Mm -hmm. However, we, we succeeded in terms of the other challenges, and that is, you mentioned the move to Volet. Mm -hmm. We were under pressure as a ministry to move the Borsejou facility to Volet, which was not ready. So we had an intermediary move. We moved to Sir Arthur Lewis Farm to allow for the, the DSH development and the first ever horse race, and that took place in, on December 13, 2019. And if I, memory serves me, the second race took place in, on December, on, sorry, February 14th, mm. uh, 2020. Okay. Yeah, so these, these were the, the things there. So we had to move. Um, quickly. Quickly, breaking <laughs> down everything, moving the staff, finding a place for the staff, upscaling the offer, putting in the pens, putting in the infrastructure, making sure um, the staff gets transport and everything is all right. So wow. we had to quickly move in a matter of months. Between September to October, we had completely uprooted from Bosiju Agricultural Station to Safa Lewis Farm. So that was one immediate challenge that we had to deal with. The other one was the there were outstanding payments for the meat processing facility. Even though the meat processing facility was not commissioned, we had brought in a company called GDM Lindex. And that was in 2015. These payments had to be made. They were outstanding. Wow. We had contractors who worked on the Asia facility from 2010 and those persons were not paid. So we had to deal with, with all of that. Then in December 2018 when I come, the usual thing happens with the St. Lucia Fish Marketing Corporation and the St. Lucia Marketing Board. They come to the government as a new permanent secretary, they come requesting, they came requesting approximately $900,000 to pay farmers to buy fish, to buy produce so that they could, they could see the returns for the Christmas season. So immediately I had to, we had to get the monies for those persons to do those things. In, 2020, in 2019, the government also decided that some restructuring should take place of the St. Lucia Marketing Board and they wanted to see the privatization of the St. Lucia Fish Marketing Corporation. Mm -hmm. So we had to make the arrangements for the, the, the dissolution of the St. Lucia Fish, Ma Fish Marketing Corporation, the payment of the staff, bringing in a new entity that we know as Lucian Blue Ocean and, and you can imagine the complexities of those things. We had to go through the dockets, we had to put inventories together and we had to do all, all the things that were required for us to legally allow that company to take over the facilities um, in Castries, Denry, and Viewfort. 
In terms of the St. Lucia Marketing Board, we had a report by Dr. Scott with recommendations, mm -hmm. and we put in a board. We wanted them to start implementing some of those restructuring recommendations. So these were some of the almost immediate challenges, and, and they were, to me at the time, they were almost insurmountable, but somehow we managed to overcome. We managed to, to deal with them, and uh, the ministry is in a much better place now. And then, of course, don't forget COVID. COVID. <laughs> and then COVID, COVID came in. Um, two years of COVID for agriculture. Um, at, at the end of the tunnel, there was that wonderful light, but when COVID started, it was an absolute nightmare. We had no staff. At some times, it was just myself, the minister, maybe the DPS, mm -hmm. in an entire ministry. And to, to recover from COVID, you need persons to be at work. Yes, correct. You need hands on deck. So the challenges for us were getting, getting the farmers back into the field, getting the passes, allowing them to go and water their plants, water their animals, um, gain access to markets. We had to give them the crosses. I don't know if you remember the 759, mm -hmm. facilitating, <laughs> facilitating all of those things. Yes, yes, allowing yes. the fishers to move from 4 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. um, to go fishing and come back returning for catch, disposing of the catch. So there were some, some administrative hurdles that we, we had to put in place, some protocols we had to put in place with um, marine police, with the traffic unit, with everybody, and keeping in line and in sync all the time with the COVID protocols. Great. So, so leading during that time, it was challenging, but um, having led during that time, I think that the management is much better for it now. Mm, the light under the turn out, um, coming out of that is that we saw a renewed vigor and focus and appreciation for agriculture after COVID. Because mm -hmm. everybody now spoke about food security. Parity. Everybody now. No food manger. Yes, we have to eat. <laughs> and I think the nation got a scare at that time. During COVID, we had to conduct two or three, or what, we, what I would say is a food audit. See how much food we have on the ground. Mm -hmm. What the food availability is like on the ground. And we conducted those successfully, reported to the cabinet. Um, and during most times, we tell them we would have about three or four months on, on ground, mm -hmm. um, the ability to feed ourselves during that, that point in time, in terms of crop production. Mm -hmm. And you know that we were self-sufficient in eggs. So we provided the cabinet with a list of inventory of what we had at the time um, on two or three occasions to satisfy the need and to ensure that we were on the right footing. Great. So that really gave us uh, a foundation as to where we are today. In other words, the, 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 our, our uh, year, year end review, I mean, uh, should, uh, it's just it's a, it's a snippet of what we did, mm -hmm. but we did a, quite a lot after COVID. Yes. And it, it, it resonated, we can actually see it. So let us look at Volet. Where we have Volet now, quickly. So, so just let me say that the, the year end review, if persons can always view it on our website, but 2022 was a year of mixed blessings for agriculture. And I'll tell you why, Mr. Sidney. The year started where we put in $3.5 million a floating jet in Miku. Yes. In less than three weeks. That was gone, eh? We had to take it out. Yes, yes. So now sadly. we're looking to put a, 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 a timber jetty for Miku and looking for the designs from infrastructure and the costing. We also, we also restarted the trade in bananas. Mm -hmm. We sent the shipment back. We started trading in May. Right. And then we had to stop in September because the demand was low and quality issues. Mm -hmm. Mixed blessings. Yes, yes, right? yes. So we, we did not have a very... Um, unfortunate circumstances as it relates to, to the weather in terms of hurricanes, etc. But yes. on November, November 6th, yes. we had that, we had that, trough. that trough, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. anomaly, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we got money in the tune of about allocation $7 million for many projects, but the allocations could not be released because of the source of funding. Mm -hmm. So we got money for projects like COCO, projects like the upgrade to fisheries infrastructure, right. boys to men, but it could not be released. So it's a, it was a year of mixed blessings where mm -hmm. we got some things, we got them, but we could not utilize them. Mm -hmm. Or when we utilized them, it turned out that we had to go back to the drawing board. Yes. So yes, we had yes. many achievements for 2022. The year in review will reveal that, but I call it, I look at it as a year of mixed blessings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Volet, um, where we are briefly? In terms of Volet, to, to date, we've, we've spent about $6.5 million on Volet. We have put in place the warehouse, the stockman shed, the watchman um, facilities, the small ruminant pens, mm -hmm. the administrative building. We have done the fencing. We have done the link road. We have done the pig pens. Uh, um, yeah, we have done all of that. Okay. 
So, so, so we are well on our way to move the animals from um, Sir so Arthur Lewis so, to... So we, we have, in this year, we have been able to work on the extension of the admin building and some road infrastructure as well. We are just also in the process of, of fencing paddocks. Um, we want to build out some compost sheds this year before the year closes off. So mm -hmm. we are almost in the process of moving to Volet. Mm -hmm. We have electricity, we have internet, we are now testing the water pumps. So once these are okay, we are in a position to move from Sir Arthur into Volet. Wow. So we're essentially looking at moving to Volet within the next two to three weeks. Very good. Our seven crop program, um, I know the Taiwanese, of course, another collaborator agency, uh, have, have, have done so much for us in the ministry mm. to St. Lucia. Uh, they are on the second phase. Where, where are we? In terms of the second phase, they, there was a renewed focus. The, the focus changed. In the first phase, we were looking at reducing the food import bill. Mm -hmm. In the second phase, the Taiwanese adopted a posture where they wanted to look at local production expand the seven crops and add additional 15 or so crops. What we realize is that this focus or perspective would not be down to the benefit of reducing the food import bill. Mm -hmm. So we had to go back and redesign that project. What we had to do is go back and say we need to monitor the targets against what has been set by CARICOM, mm -hmm. the 25 by 25 initiative that we are part of. Mm -hmm. um, the OECS as a sub-region also with the fast, the fast strategy, the food and agriculture systems transformation strategy mm -hmm. contributes to that. So at the national level, we have indicated that there are three projects or three areas that would contribute to the 25 by 25, reaching 25% of reduction in our food import bill by 2025. 25, yeah. And that is one would be the seven crops project. Two would be the, the Volet Livestock Station mm -hmm. through the Livestock Development Master Plan right. and the targets in there. Mm -hmm. And also NADAF in terms of helping in terms of research, quarantine and SPS challenges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these are the areas we highlighted when we set the targets based on that. So in keeping with that, we have remodeled the Seven Crops Project and now we're seeing seedling production being reintroduced. We have components dealing with irrigation, um, sales of irrigation supplies, subsidization, input supplies. In, we have also introduced mechanization. And there was a recent ceremony yesterday showing about uh, knapsack sprayers and diggers and augers and the like. And there was, there, there, recently there was also the, the eight tillers. Yes, the yeah. eight tillers. Mm -hmm. Well, the four tillers and four diggers. Four diggers, four, four yes. diggers. Yes. So, yes. So, we want to really introduce the technology and make reduce the labor cost, reduce the time on mm -hmm. task, cost and, of make production. It, and make it mm -hmm. easier for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we, have, we have to do that. But NADA, tell us about NADA because people, which is a national agricultural di diagnosis facility. Give us a breakdown on that. What, uh, what, what, what's uh, the objective of NADAF? Now, NADAF is a two-story building at Union near infrastructure. The, the, the first story houses our offices for the vet services, the plant research services, engineering personnel, and to some extent the Bureau of Standards, St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. We have laboratories on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. We have the, the plant laboratories, animal laboratories, the food, food and nutrition laboratories, and the Bureau has a metrology lab in there as well. So the, the focus of these labs is to offer services to our clients, fishers, farmers, in terms of research on pest diseases, mm -hmm. um, in terms of that. Soil. Soil, soils profiles, soil mm -hmm. samples, soil analysis, put, Fertilizer analysis, okay, so feed analysis, feed, ana feed analysis, mm -hmm. all of that, mm -hmm. the nutrition in feed, mm -hmm. we want to see, so if the feed is bad, mm -hmm. we, we want to be able to see what, what is wrong what with is it. Wrong? Uh, what's uh, missing, yeah, what's what elements missing. are missing. Yes, yes, yes so yes. we want to do all of those things. And if you have um, the, the food lab, in terms of testing your agro processing, your chocolates, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your honey, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so testing your products, seeing what, what is in there, um, assisting with producing your labels, what is in there and, and the like. Um, so these are the things that the lab will be able to do for us. If you have an animal and you do not know what is the cause of death, it's strange. We are now almost completing the construction of the post-mortem building, mm -hmm. where you'll be able to bring in that animal. We'll be able to perform the post-mortem on it and tell you what the causes are. And mm -hmm. if it is a disease um, that, is, that warrants our intervention in stop of the spread, then the other sections of the ministry will, will, will spring into action. Great. So great, these, great. these are the things that we're hoping that this facility becomes the premier facility in the region. Mm -hmm. 
that we outshine <coughs> some of the labs that have been already established and we offer the services at a price that is comparable or better than what is on the market. Yes, and that's, that's not good for you, eh? Yes. Well, because farmers are complaining about um, the, the soil test results over the years, looking at, uh, at acidity, soil pH, the whole thing. So I'm so, happy so, now that that will be, you know. We have the equipment now to perform most of those things. Okay. We're missing the reagents. Mm -hmm. But the critical component that is also missing is the skill sets. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is a dearth of scientific persons mm -hmm. in St. Lucia to fill the positions that, that we have. We have um, what, nematologists and yeah, all, no. all the, the, the fancy scientific persons that you, that you need. But hopefully, hopefully that will be done. It's be, the positions have been filled in too slowly. We've had funding for positions for about two years now. Okay. And we're slowly filling like, the, those positions. So you find the, the um, chemical analysts and all of these positions slowly mm -hmm. being filled. Mm -hmm. It's not been filled at a rate where we, we are comfortable like, okay. that, that we like to have full operations of the lab. Okay, we'll do, we'll do for our first break. Okay. Oh, well, our only break. You're watching Agriculture in the Move. Stay tuned. We're due for our break. But stay tuned. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development is placing heavy emphasis on the concept of food security. It's our prosperity, our future. The Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project, CSEP, is targeting the rehabilitation of at least 201 acres of cocoa and the expansion of at least 294 acres. It protects against main diseases like black pod and witch's broom and pests like rodents. It secures the appropriate enabling environment to advance the sector. To learn more about the Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project, please contact Project Coordinator at 459-7003. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. And of course with me is our Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development, Mr. Barrymore Felicier. Mr. Felicier, um, right now we are on that mood of our food and security, food and nutrition security strategy. All right? Yes. Everything that we do now is under that, under that umbrella, okay? Um, we have done a lot in the past, maybe last year, when it came to our, um, the, 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 the persons involved in small cottage industry, right? Look, 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 assisting them moving forward. We had a number of, of, of festivals. We have had the, the, um, the, the mango, the, the banana, and also the the Simos, the Simos festival. Uh, moving forward, what are we doing after all of those festivals? Well, we want to take a comprehensive approach to look at agro processing and, and value added as a whole. So we, we started looking at facilities, and you would recall that that we added the women's facility in Babuno. Correct. And now, last year, we engaged uh, Milfle mm -hmm. in, in the leasing of the Lakai facility. So we really want to see them take up that opportunity. Um, tomorrow there is a, a tour to Lakai where we'll be, we'll be walking through with Milfle, seeing what is required, see how we can assist them in actually letting that facility be open and be run. Okay. So we want to do that. We want to make sure that the, the, these assets are fully utilized. For us, so we also want to take a look at for us, uh, for us, so the, the big facility at Fuasso mm -hmm. and see how, how that can be rejuvenated, restarted, what, what is required to look at that. It is an asset that is idle. It has been idle since the onset of COVID, and we want to make sure that it is utilized. Beyond, beyond that, we've given assistance to the, the CMOS, CMOS farmers, both in Opica and, and Pwale. Savans Bay. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, um, Savans Bay, mm -hmm. the Opica, CMOS, and group in mm -hmm. Savans Bay and Pwale, assisting them in terms of building capacity. In Pwale, we you would notice that there is a move through Export St. Lucia to remove all the plastic bottles there, right. to have to have better drying tables, and there was also assistance given in terms of the facility, the the facility that to process process CMOS. So okay. these are some of the interventions that are going on. Value added, again, is is the way to go. We are too low in in the in the chain, too low in the chain, so we don't reap the benefits of it all. Mm -hmm. the, pri the primary product does not only gives us marginal benefits. We have since then been going on a drive to realize that the cost of electricity, the cost of electricity is very high. And to run those agro-processing facilities, it takes a toll on your business, on your business um, margin. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to see through government, through the budget process, to see if 
the solarization of those facilities will be funded and that will help us be more competitive. So these are some of the things moving forward that we want to see happening in agro-processing. We have also sought funds for the continuation of the festivals in terms of, of cassava and Cocoa coconuts. Cocoa and coconuts, yes. So, yes. so that looking, hoping that will be approved mm -hmm. and then we can roll out those festivals to show and, and showcase those products, what can be done with them, how can we add value, how can we, we increase their, their standard, their value, mm -hmm. their appeal, and ensure that, that in some way that we are able to even export those products and have niche, ma niche, niche markets for those products. Fisheries unit, <laughs> where we that, I'm hearing about this blue economy. Tell us about this, P.S. So we have a major project on stream. It's called Unleashing the Blue Economy Project. St. Lucia stands to receive about uh, 18 million under that project. We are in that project along with St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Grenada. And OECS provides some sort of coordination for all the three countries. Under the fisheries, the, the, the project also in the 18 million, there are components for tourism. Mm -hmm for fisheries and for waste management. So we, we stand to, to utilize about 3.4 million again as, as part of the, the main components in that of policies, review and regulation, legislation review, upgrade to fisheries facilities, and of course the cost insurance for fishers. But however, they have now triggered a new component under the emer emergency response area, um, the critical response window. So we have $10 million that will be granted to the Ministry of Agriculture for us to support our ongoing programs. We are in the process of developing the project components and the project proposal concepts with the World Bank. So detailing the activities that can happen in keeping with the World Bank guidelines. We have 12 months to spend $10 million US dollars, mm. Mr. Singh. That is uh, we have ten, And we are supposed to start from February 2023, the Ministry of Finance is supposed to be the project implementation unit, and we are supposed to be the implementation agency, feeding them with the, the invoices and taking on the work on the ground. Wow. So that is $10 million. That's a Herculean task, boy. <laughs> to spend in one year, in keeping, in keeping the, 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 the stickler is that in keeping with the World Bank guidelines, guidelines, which have, they have not been relaxed. They have not been relaxed to allow us more time. Wow, wow, wow. So we have, we have a year ahead, ahead of us, a year of implementation. Okay. The, the, the Schwarze f fishing facility, which has been a sore point over the years. Yes. Um, I have heard of the, you know, uh, the Japanese have come back to give some assistance. Where, what's, what's, what's happening now? Well, I wouldn't say that Japanese have come back. They, they've not really gone away. From, from since the event occurred in, in, 20, in early 2000, mm. 2001, 2003, thereabout, they, we, they have been engaging us on ways at solving the problem, the sedimentation problem mm -hmm. in Swazil. There's been a renewed vigor over the last three years, I would say, three to four years, where they've come in and they've looked at models, modeling, They've looked at designs and countermeasures to that. So they have come up with solutions, okay. or with a preferred solution in terms of building a first and, and second gro groin, and of course a sand deposit area um, not too far from where the Swizzle, Swizzle um, shoreline is. Okay. So these are the things that they are doing. But that intervention will take about three years for the construction of those groins and those measures. But in the meantime, they are still conducting surveys. They have conducted last year one survey. They have done some dredging. They are about to commence on another survey this year. And they are, we just sent in to DC and the Ministry of Infrastructure the various approvals for dredging that area again um, in January. Okay. So pretty soon, or if not, um, the persons in Switzerland, the fishermen, should see activity there where there will be removal of sand and deposition of sand not too far away from the Suezel facility. And of course, they would see the persons from, from JICA and the consultants ECHO, mm -hmm. ECHO Limited from Japan okay. doing the work. So ECHO is, is contracted through for the Japanese government and they're supposed to provide us with supervision of the work, help us with the designs, 
preparation of the bidding documents and oversee the bidding process. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to hear that um, the Miku jetty is back on track. Yes, I'm, I'm hoping it's not going to be a floating jetty, as Doug mentioned earlier on. It's going to be more steady, and I know my good friend Jeremiah will be happy to hear about that. Uh, so I think that is a fait accompli. Well, not a fait accompli. We, we're still in the stage where we don't want what happened with the floating jetty at Miku to recoup. The dynamics in the Miku area, the Miku Bay, it, it seems to have changed. Mm. So what the Ministry of Infrastructure is recommending is that we conduct the, the required bathymetric surveys to allow us to build a jetty that is suitable for the area. So um, they, will, they are now in the process of looking at what is required, mm -hmm. um, the designs and the costing, and we'll make a submission to us. And of course, we'll make a submission to the Ministry of Finance for the funding of that. Okay, great. So that is, that is where we are with that. But we also want to look to see whether or not there is utility in using the floating pieces, the floating jetty in the cast Harbor. Can it be used? It, it would be a shame to have a $3.5 million asset mm. put in a container and left just to rot. Wow. So if it can be used, and again, the, the Japanese government has they have promised to assist in performing the requisite studies, uh, or paying for them, or supporting them, to allow us to see whether it can be used in castries near, near Lucian Blue or Savans Bay, mm -hmm. um, where the, it is sufficiently enclosed so that there is no, no major disruption of, okay. on the floating blocks. And where are we with the fishers and the Blue Ocean? Lucian Blue Ocean. So we, with Lucian Blue Ocean, we, we had to take a, a pause to step back because the, the company seemed to have run into some financial difficulty. So the government is now considering to us, um, assisting Lucian Blue Ocean through um, a loan facility to help them with any outstanding debts they have. So we, we're hoping all of that will come through. Lucian Blue Ocean will be in a position now to reopen its doors and to allow the purchasing of fish from our fishers. Oh, so good. that is where we are. Um, we are supporting, the government is supporting Lu Lucian Blue Ocean. Mm -hmm. We know that is the, the main entity for purchasing fish, mm -hmm. and we know that the, the fish season, the high cat season, is on its way. Great. And to last but not least, the, the um, vessel life saving system. Oh, the vessel life saving system. We have been engaging Digicel over the last two years to help us bring to fruition the vessel life saving system. Every year, Mr. Sydney, you hear about one or two persons, yeah. fishers, who sadly, go, who sadly mm -hmm. they go missing at sea. The, the importance of that device is to help save lives and property. And that is, that is a single priority that the Ministry of Agriculture has by installation of this device. It is real-time tracking. If you are in trouble, it is global tracking. It means that if you are anywhere in the world and the device is active, you can be found and rescued. GPS. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can be found and rescued, mm -hmm. which is what, what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Because when using any other means, our Coast Guard, Martinique Coast Guard, St. Vincent Coast Guard, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Yes, yes, yes. Trying to find a needle in a haystack. So that's a life-saving so, device. So we value the fishers' lives, and I'm hoping that they value their lives. And everybody will sign up for it. And therefore, we'll have a fleet of persons where if, in the unfortunate circumstance that they go missing, that we can have a, a high success rate in retrieving the, the fisher and the vessel. P.S. we have come to the end of the program. I want to thank you for being here. And I'm wishing you success moving forward. I know it's going to be, again, another dynamic year for you and us in the Ministry of Agriculture and staff. But I know we have survived it and we will continue to do, to do what we're supposed to do. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Sidney. I want to really thank um, my staff very much. They've been very supportive. They've been responsive. But I think this year we, we need the year of implementation, I call it. Mm -hmm. I have a name for all, all years. Last year was the year of visibility. So now there's the year of delivery. <laughs> yes, delivery <laughs> so and implement thank you again. implementation. So yeah. we, I, I want my staff to do their best, be committed, work hard. And I ask the stakeholders, the fishers and farmers, to engage us, to work with us, mm -hmm. and continue to partner with us for the benefit of the agriculture sector. Thank you very much. You've been watching Agriculture and Move. Thank you for viewing the program and continue to view it. Remember, agriculture is our business. It's fresh. St. Lucia's best. I'm Philip Sidney. Goodbye. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move.
Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move.